Okay, ow! Ugh, to take it out. The fly is always scary for some reason. Hello, and welcome to my studio. I am so excited to make a pair of wide leg pleated trousers today with this gorgeous linen, just this beautiful neutral. I'll be working from a pant block that I created and I have a tutorial for that link below. If you don't want to make a pant block from scratch, you can also just copy a pair of non-stretch pants or jeans that you have and I'll link a video below for you that can help you with that as well. So. I'm going to create the pant pattern, which really isn't that hard. There's, as long as you have a pattern or like a pant block which fits, your pattern's going to be pretty easy to create. What you'll need is some fabric. You probably want, with a wide leg, you want about two and a half yards. I have two yards and 10 inches of fabric. I'm really hoping that's gonna work. Um, you want some kind of button or I have these this hook and bar that will make it discreet And then you want a zipper probably around six inches mine I think is seven inches and you want matching thread and then some fusible interfacing is nice for the waistband because it will keep its shape And that's really all you need. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how to create the pattern this is what we'll be drafting today. I'll be drafting in inches, but I'll give you the centimeters as well. It won't be the exact conversion, except when I talk about the zipper length, but it will be sufficient for you to draft in centimeters and have everything line up. I am using my front and back pant block as a foundation to build this pattern. I created this in another video, as I mentioned, and it's linked below. Start by tracing out your front block and draw a line straight down from the knee line, so 90 degrees down from the knee line. Next, extend a line straight down from the hip line. I'm using this tool to ensure that I get a 90 degree angle from the hip line. I like to transfer my hip, crotch, and knee lines for added notches later. But most importantly, you want to transfer your grain line. Grain lines help you cut the pants straight so that you don't end up with a skewed leg or bad drape. We've all bought pants like that and it's just not fun to wear. Since I didn't want a super high waist, I shortened the waist of the pant by measuring one and a half inches, so 3.5 centimeters from the top of the pant. This top portion will be my waistband. At this new pant waistline, mark two inches or five centimeters from the side of your pant and create an angled line six inches in length to the side seam of the pant. This is the pocket opening. Cut out your darts, then cut off your waistband piece, then tape them together where the dart was. We'll work on this later. To create the pleat, cut down your grain line to the hem, or basically just cut a straight line down from the inner edge of your dart to the hem. If you don't have a dart on your block, make this cut three inches or seven and a half centimeters from the center front straight down to your hem. Then, including the width of the dart, measure two and a half inches or six centimeters to create a one and a quarter inch or three centimeter pleat. Insert some paper into this spread and tape it open. Mark the center of your new pleat and draw a new green line from the hem to this new point. Also mark the outer edges of your pleat with a little notch on each side. Then you would eliminate the sliver on the corner of your pant to complete the front pant. To create the pocket pieces, I tape that sliver back on and then trace the outer edge of the pant from six inches below the hip line to the pleat notch for some deep pockets. Mark your hip and or crotch line as well. Measure six inches or more straight out from the bottom of your pocket. Connect your pleat notch to this line, then draw a nice curved line from top to bottom. Mark your grain line so that it is parallel to your pant grain line. Then cut this piece out, trace it out again, and cut the pocket opening sliver off of one of them. The one with the sliver cut off will face the pant pocket, and the full shape will be the pocket backing. And it will make up for the sliver that we took off the front pant. Next, let's create the fly facing and shield. 
First, determine the length of your zipper and mark where it ends. I want my fly to be 6 inches or 15.24 centimeters exactly in length, so I'll make my zipper comply to that. So I marked 6 inches or 15.24 centimeters down. Then I traced out the edge of my pant. Measure one and a half inches or 3.5 centimeters parallel from the front crotch of the pant. Make a curved line to the zipper end marking. This is your fly facing. Then trace out this piece and add a half inch or one centimeter in width and length to the left and bottom. This will be cut on fold on the straight side. Now take your front waistband piece, trace it out and smooth the sharp angles. Mark where you taped it together as this is where it will line up with the pleat notch. That will be the side that has the fly facing. Then trace this piece out again and add two inches to the center front area. Mark the center front with a notch and this little area will line up with the fly shield. This is kind of what's going to happen, I'm trying to demonstrate it here, but of course you'll be able to see it better when I'm actually constructing the pant. Now that we have completed the front pant area, we've basically done all of the complex parts. So now we're just going to create the wide leg on the back pant, same as we did with the front. So I'm drawing a line down 90 degrees on the inseam from the knee line and 90 degrees from the hip line on the outseam. Mark down one and a half inches for the waistband and cut it all out. If your paper is rolling like mine, just drag your paper along the edge of your table to flatten it and it works like a charm. Cut out the darts like we did on the front, cut off the waistband, mark the center back and tape them together. And cats love tape so just watch your fingers. Hey, ow! Then this is optional, you don't really need to do this because I sewed a seam in my back, but I folded a piece of paper and lined up the center back of my waistband with the fold. Then I traced it out and cut it out for the full back waistband. And this is kind of how it lines up to the pant. I joined the front waistband to either side of the back waistbands to create the full waistband. You could cut the full thing like this and have a totally seamless waistband or you could cut it in two pieces adding seam allowance at the center back which is what I did or you can just keep it in three pieces so the back piece and then the two front pieces and then have it join at the side seams. So here is our final pant pattern. Make sure that you've included all your notches it's really helpful for sewing the pant together accurately. At this point, you could add seam allowance to everything, at least to the smaller pieces. So you can add a half inch or one centimeter everywhere and one and a half inches or four centimeters to the hem. I'm gonna start by ironing my linen. If Pepper will get it away. Oh, this is a nine. Always cut the bigger pieces first and plan out your cutting so that you have enough fabric for everything. You will want fabric that is double the length of your outseam plus about 10 inches or so. My husband got me flowers. How nice was that? <laughs> I can't smell them through the up. You want to line up your pieces with the grain of the fabric parallel to the selvage edge. Make sure that you snip all of your notches because that's gonna help you match up your pieces so much better. Hey, <laughs> here, go over there. over there. There you go. You also want to add some lightweight fusible interfacing to all four pieces of your waistband. It will help minimize stretching over time. Everything is cut. We've got the back piece with those two little darts. The left and right waistband. I don't know which one is left and which one is right yet. 
the four pocket pieces. Just disregard the extended shape of the pockets. I originally drafted them to be sewn into the fly area like a traditional trouser, but I ended up cutting it off later. The front pant, and there's fusible interfacing on the pocket area, and then the fly and shield. I was able to add my one and a half inch to the front pant, but not to the back pant, so I made a facing. I just added a half an inch to my pant pattern at the bottom, and then I added 1.5 here plus a half inch for seam allowance to add to here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sew this to this. I'm also going to press this hem up one and a half inches, just pre-press it. And then I'm going to start with the fly. <laughs> I sewed this right sides together. And now I'm just going to fold it down like this and sew the seam allowance to this piece. Before I sew the fly front, I need to overlock some areas. I'll show you a diagram of which edges you need to overlock, or you can also use a zigzag stitch on your domestic machine. This just keeps the fabric from fraying while you wear it and wash it. These edges are happily contained. I'm actually very nervous to do the fly front. I have done quite a few fly fronts in my sewing years, but I always get nervous about them. This is the right side of my front pant. This is the fly shield. This is the fly. The fly shield goes on this side and the fly goes on this side. So first you start with the fly shield. You're going to line up your zipper right side facing down on this side with the little end right at the notch that we made. I like to baste it in place with a colored thread. Okay, this is ready for the fly shield, but I didn't prepare my fly shield yet. So face it right sides together and then just sew up the half inch seam allowance along the bottom. So here it is. Flip it in. Then you want to face this right sides together, making sure it lines up with the top of the pant waist. Pin it in place. And then I'm going to sew this area at 3 eighths of an inch so that the seam allowance is a little bit over and you'll see why later. I'm changing to a zipper foot. Then when you turn it out, it's going to look like this. And then you can do a nice little stitch close to the edge along here. the fly to the pant right sides together and sew at a half inch. Okay, that's understitched. Then we fold this under. Next, I'm going to place this side right over this, an eighth over the edge of your seam. I like to pin this right in place. Okay, it's all pinned in place. Now, I have to move the fly shield out of the way because we don't want to sew through that. Move that out of the way. <laughs> and then we're going to move the top of the pant out of the way. And we're essentially going to sew the fly to the zipper tape. And we're going to sew all the way down here with a zipper foot. And let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, so it's all sewn in. Hard to see the stitch. It kind of just blends right into the tape. Yeah. So that's basically done. I should steam this to get out all the little wrinkles. But now what I need to do is sew the crotch of the front pant. We want the stitch to end like just above the little zipper end. I'm just going to put, pin this in place. I like leaving an inch of this unsewn so that I can sew the inseam really nicely. 
This is where the end stitch is. I'm gonna get try to get as close to that as possible and just sew along here and I'm gonna leave a little bit unsewn here. I just took out my basting stitch from before. I didn't get very high. I only got up to here, whereas this is the end of my lie end shield. So I have to go quite a ways up, but I'm gonna do that with top stitching. Going to top stitch here, from here, going down to the bottom, and that's just above the end of the zipper. Now it opens just to there. The little end is down there a little bit. So the top stitch, so that this doesn't pull back like that, it's gonna start up here about an inch or an inch and a half away, go down and curve under the little end of the zipper. I'm gonna pin this in place. Oh yes. Make sure you move the fly front out of the way. Oh, it turned out just wonderful. I have not done a fly front in ye- Oh, shoot. I sewed back the fly. Ah, oh, how do you do it without doing that? Oh, to take it out. Don't do what I did. Now you know. Now I'm gonna go back with this flat and sew just that little part. Now what I'm gonna do is just sew the fly to the fly shield just at the bottom here. So we're basically halfway down the pant now that we've done the fly. I always feel that way because the fly is always scary for some reason. But it's really not that bad. I just haven't done it for a while. Look at that. Look at that. I'm going to now close the pleats. So I have two little notches here that I am going to match together with the right side. And then you can decide which side you want to fold this bulk. I think I'm gonna try folding it outward this time because I just wanna try and see what it looks like. Then just do a little pre-stitch a quarter inch from the edge. Next, we're going to do the pockets. Ah! We're going to take this one with the cutout, place it right sides together, and we're gonna sew this up at a half inch. With the seam allowance flat like this, fold your pocket piece out and then just sew a little stitch right against the edge. There we go. Woohoo! So I'm gonna have to cut this off. I'm just gonna turn this over. We're gonna match the notches on this pocket. Then you'll know it's, that it lines up properly. Carefully. So now I'm gonna sew this up separately from the pant on both sides and then I'm going to overlock the edge and I still have to overlock this part too so we're going to do that as well. So I'm going to sew the top of the waist here through all thicknesses and also along the side seam. Okay, it's sewn up here. Up there. How cute are these? <laughs> oh my gosh. All we have to do is sew up the back darts, then the inseam, then the outseam, and then add the waistband, hem it, and we're done. I'm going to sew these darts.
So now I'm going to sew up the crotch seam or the center back seam. I'm going to leave this little part unsewn, but I'm going to sew up the whole thing. Then just press the seam open. Okay, it is now time to sew the back to the front. We can just separately sew the inseam together. Then we can sew the outseams. Once both legs are sewn up, there's gonna be a little bit of a gap here. So you're just going to flatten the inseam seams and then sew up that gap. Okay, so I've done the inseam, ironed them, and then now let's just sew up the outseams. I repressed my hems, pinned them up from the outside, and sewed them up. Because you have to backstitch at the beginning and end, you want to start your stitch in the inseam so that it doesn't show. Here they are. I think that they are looking good. Understanding the waistband. So, this is gonna be the side with the shorter waistband, and this is gonna be the side with the longer waistband because when you open this up, we have this extension, and this is center front. These are the center back areas. This is the short piece, this is the longer piece, this is the longer piece, this is the short piece. It should be opposite like this because once we sew them together, they are going to face each other. Sew these right sides together at half an inch. Okay, now we are going to face these right sides together. Then just sew half an inch along the top. Okay, so here it is. I want to understitch the inside of it, um, but I have to figure out which that is. This is the longer side, this is the shorter side. So I'm gonna see how the longer side lines up with my fly shield and yeah so this side will line up with the shield there's my notch for my pleat and the notch for the center front so I want to have the seam allowance going this way and I'm going to understitch on this side Put this right sides together is going to line up here and there will be you need to leave that seam allowance off the edge here center back for side seam and center front now i'm going to sew all the way around For the edges, I'm going to fold this back and then I'm going to sew the edge. Oh, perfectly flush. Oh no, I caught some of it, see? Okay, and then just to clean finish a little section here, we're going to match this side to this side just by going around the edge here. And I'm pinning it just a little bit past the zipper on the fly shield side, say like a half inch past it. And then on fly side, a little bit past the, the fly. Okay, I'm gonna sew these up at half an inch and then show you what it looks like. 
Okay, I've already turned this one out so you can see that it's like clean finished in there. Uh, but the other side, you can see I still have it inside, so I'm gonna pull it out. Okay, so I've got this all pinned up inside. What I'm going to do now is stitch in the ditch to finish this. So I'm just stitching right in this seam and catching this in the back. So we can see what went on back here. Here we've got the stitches right in the ditch. And then, last of all, you need a fastener. I'm gonna put the hook on this side. I'm gonna place it more towards the top and close-ish to the edge. I did three stitches and I did it twice um, each. There's that one. It'd also be good to put a buttonhole on here and then a little flat button here so that you could also button that up. For now, I'm happy with just this. Last thing to do, iron your pants, iron a crease in the front and back of the pant and it will just look side seam to inseam. Thank you.